Hey guys, so I did a little poll the other night and um, there was a few things that people wanted me to talk about. Um, so I was thinking about doing it last night, but then my husband wanted to watch Suits and well, that one. So I'm coming on today. Hopefully I can get everything done before the baby wakes up. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to talk about um, how you could approach um, businesses for wholesale orders. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, different ways that you can market um, your business. So um, we're just going to wait for a couple more people to come on. Um, so I know that we had touched a few other, um, I guess, topics too. So what I'm basically going to do is um, a couple days here and there, I'm just going to kind of get myself ready and come on and talk about them. So if you want to join, cool. If you want to wait till they're posted, that's fine too. Because um, some of them can get a little bit lengthy, like the last one I did um, was like almost an hour. So if you're just, you don't have the time, then that's fine. Thank you. It's the lip stain. So I love it. Um, but yeah, so if you don't want to listen to it right now, it's fine. You can come back and take a look at it after. Um, I know that there's a few people that were asking about my YouTube channel. That I'm just waiting to get it monetized. So basically you can get paid to post videos on YouTube. Um, and yeah, so I always thought that you had to wait till you have oh I'm shaking the table sorry guys I always thought you had to wait till you had like a certain amount of subscribers or a certain amount of people liking your videos and all that no so as soon as you get a YouTube channel you go on there and you get an AdSense AdSense account and you just kind of like combine these two websites together or whatever and it's called monetizing so as soon as you start getting subscribers like the so I guess the thing is that the more subscribers and the more people that like and watch and comment on your video the more money you're gonna make but you can make money right off the bat so I'm just waiting for that to get accepted and I didn't think it was gonna take this long but it is but anyways I'm just waiting for that to get accepted so that I can start getting paid for the videos and then um, I can post longer videos so without that you can only post like 10 minute videos or 15 minute videos and so I can't post that hour long video I'd have to cut it up into like six videos basically or seven and um, I don't think you guys want to be clicking part one part two and so I'm just waiting for that once that's all good then I'll have all of the videos posted on there and then I'll just post the links and then you guys can watch them whenever you want you guys don't have to watch me live or listen to me babble live so I'm gonna get started there's some people on so um, I did um, there's one piece of I guess info that I'm not gonna be able to give you big details about because I thought I had saved it on my computer and I guess I didn't so I'm even gonna have to redo it which kind of sucks because I was like this is a perfect it was the letter that you would send to the people um, to the businesses I don't I can't find it I'm gonna keep looking on my computer but anyways I'm kind of disappointed if I don't find it but anyway so we're gonna talk about how you would approach a business to have your um, products wholesaled at their business. So this isn't you renting a space, this is them buying your products at wholesale prices and they would have it available in their, um, in their business space. So this is how I do it. You can, there's a lot of other different ways, um, you know, this is just one option that I like to do and that I find has been working for me. Um, I have three wholesale places right now. One is in my hometown and there's two that are out of town. So I didn't do this exactly for the two obviously that are out of town, but the one, this is kind of how I did it. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about four options that you can use and then we're going to talk about... Um, uh, four options that you can use, I guess, to get into contact with them. So the option one would be to write this letter. Um, so the letter is basically um, you talking to them about your business and why you think that they should carry your product, okay? So this is a big thing. You need to be confident in your products. You need to be confident in yourself, in your business, and why 
yours is better than anybody else's, okay? You guys need to stop thinking you're just mediocre and, oh, well, you know, I don't have good, the, the greatest packaging or I don't have this or, you know, no. Whatever you do have is awesome. And you, if this is a part that you want to start, you know, doing for your business, then you're going to get this and everybody's going to love your product, okay? So be positive in your business. Be positive in yourself. Don't ever feel uh, about your business, okay? And if you do, then there's an issue and you have to go back and kind of reevaluate things, okay? So the letter. These are the, basically the things that you're going to talk about. Like I said, I don't have the letter. I don't know where it is. But anyways, you're going to start with to whom, blah, 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 okay? So... Now, you can just write to whom it may concern, but it would almost be better if you went and researched either the owner's name, the manager's name, something, okay? If you can't find it, then fine. Another thing that you could do is actually call the business and say, I'm just sending you a letter um, about my um, a business opportunity, and I just wanted to know what the manager's name was or what the owner's name was. They tell you, thank you very much, that's it, okay? So you're going to say to whom or whatever the person's name is. I am so-and-so. You're going to, you know, you're going to say um, who you are and um, and then talk about the business. So you're going to talk about yourself very sh briefly. Um, and then you're going to say, I'm the owner of said business. Um, I would be interested in working with you for wholesale orders, uh, for a wholesale order or whatever um and then so you're gonna say you know my business is this and this i make bath and body products homey bath and body products um i started my business however many years ago i got into it because uh you know whatever whatever um and now i would like to grow my business and start offering my products to salons or to wherever you know you are uh, you're wanting your products to be um showcase and stuff I'm looking into expanding my um, you know all that kind of stuff and then you're gonna say something about them so you just talked about yourself now you're gonna bring them into it and make them feel special so you're gonna say something along the lines of I feel that my products would work best um, when I when you do a face-to-face -face, are you dressed up like right now like a live video Gloria Answer me. If it's right now, yes, I'm only I'm dressed up. I've I got my eyes done, my makeup done, my hair. Well, I should have washed my hair yesterday, but yes, I'm dressed up. I I will not talk to you face to face in my PJs. And if I do, it would have been the ten o'clock at night video. Okay, always oh, dress up. Like you don't have to dress up up, but put pants on, put a shirt on, put a little bit of mascara on, lipstick, and go to work. Even if you're at home, go to work. Okay. Rule number one. <laughs> okay, so going back to um, talking about them. So, yeah, so talk about them. Say um, face-to-face. -face. Yeah, you're going to dress up. If you're going face-to-face -face with a business, would you go in your, you know, present yourself like your product? Yes, exactly. So if you look good and talk about your products in a positive manner, and you're positive about yourself, they're going to want your product way more than if you showed up with your hair in a messy bun and no makeup on and in, you know, your Sunday lounging clothes, okay? Back to the letter. So, you're going to talk about them. You're going to say, uh, I really think that my products would benefit your business because, you know, let's, let's say it's a salon, okay? I see that, like the salon that I used to work at, because I'm, I'm a hairstylist. Well, I used to be a hairstylist. Um, so when I worked in the salon, we had um, a product line called Purology. Good. You should always look dressed up. Perfect. So I um, worked in a salon, and our product line was L'Oreal, and we had Purology. Purology is a 100%, well, 100%. They're going to say 100%, but obviously they're putting um, preservatives or whatever. But it was like a very clean, um, earth-friendly type um, product line. 
So if they were, if they, if you know that they have that kind of product in there, you can go ahead and say, I know that you are um, conscious or conscious about, um, you know, preserving the environment and our planet and, you know, whatever kind of buttering them up about that. Well, my products are, um, are eco-friendly or they're natural and they're all handmade, small batch. I really take pride in them, you know, so you're just going to kind of talk about how, um, your products are going to fit perfectly into their salon or into their little boutique or whatever. You know, I see that you carry a lot of handmade things. My products are handmade. So I think my, I know that my products would fit perfectly in, in your little boutique or, um, you know, your, your boutique is close to, um, a tourist area. Tourists love to get, you know, bring home little gifts and stuff. My products are perfect size for, um, you know, doing that or, um, whatever, like you just, you, you, you have to look into their business and see what they, they're doing and what they're all about. And then just butter them up with whatever your business is and how you feel that their, your business is going to mesh well with theirs. Okay. So you're just going to have a little kind of thing about that. And then, um, I always like to mention that if they'd like to book a meeting with you to talk further about, um, these opportunities to either call or email you and then you give them your phone number and your email and then I always like to add and obviously you have to kind of make this sound professional and whatever and if you guys need help with that once I find my letter I can kind of or if I rewrite it I can kind of give you guys a little bit more tips so I'm just going over it quickly there but you have to kind of sit down and really think about this letter but these are the points that you want to talk about okay so last point um, you're going to kind of say something about if if you're not interested in this offer, please send us an email and you're going to have your email address to let us know um, that you're not interested and to avoid a follow up call because you're going to do a follow up call after if they haven't contacted you within a week, you're going to call them. I mean, it's better to call them if you're still too nervous about it, you can email them, but the email is not always going to get to somebody. So you might just be standing around and kind of waiting around for it. But, um, the phone call, you're going to speak to somebody. So you're going to speak to the receptionist. You're going to speak to the manager or whatever, whoever that answers the phone. Right? So you want to kind of put something at the bottom that basically says, if you're not interested, contact me and let me know that you're not interested so that we can avoid basically annoying you with phone calls. Okay. If they don't do that, if you didn't get an email, or a phone call or something, then that's when you put them on the list of I need to call them in however many days that you want. I like to do a week because especially with salons, I've worked in a salon, I know it gets super, super busy. If the owner or the manager or whatever wasn't there, you know, she's whatever. You give them at least a week to kind of think about it, look at the letter, talk about it, whatever else, okay? Now at the bottom of that, you're gonna say you can find, you can find me or you can, um, take a quick look at my website or at my Facebook page or um, anything like that to give them a little kind of taste of what the products are. And then sincerely, blah, 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 your letters are done, okay? So this is the letter that you're going to send to them or bring to them. So you can, so you're going to write your letter. You're there's a few different ways that you can approach the business from there, okay? So you can either bring the letter, bring a few samples. So I said three to five samples, and I'm bringing, I'm showing kind of sample-y type sizes, okay? So sample. I showed these ones at the other thing. These are at the other, my other live um, presentation. So these are the little um, bath truffles, okay? They're very, very tiny. They're, so you can bring that. You could bring, um, this is a foaming sugar scrub in one of those little one ounce containers. You could bring that. Obviously you'd have your label on them. Uh, this is a shower steamer. So you could bring a little shower steamer, oh, just one. These are little wax um, tarts or wax melts, whatever. You can have just, this is just like the donut ones. You could have one of those, put it in there if you sell wax products. Um, these, this is another idea. You can sell separate or not sell. You're bringing them. You could bring separate little wax things. So the girl, like, let's say whatever, there's 
if it's a salon or even if it's a regular business, they're going to have um, uh, worker like employees and stuff. Well, they could each take one and bring it home and use it and see what they like or how they feel about it, right? So you could do that. A little thing of of lotion, um, you know. So just small little. This could even be. I bought little um, like pouches. Um, they're like sealable little pouches and they'd be like little testers so you'd end up peeling the side and squishing out like whatever product that's inside kind of thing you could do that too um i had and i don't like this company but i had ordered them because i had to order other things sapphire blue from canada you you could probably find them on Berry. i don't know you'd have to maybe look but um they're just little little um pouches about this big you fill the product like a liquidy product and you seal the end and then you just you rip it off they have them at, at um, Sapphire Blue. So you could always do stuff like that for more like liquidy kind of lotions and stuff. So you bring, you know, three, five-ish different products and you kind of want to touch base with the idea of if you are if you have like Bath Body Home, you want to touch base with all of them. You don't want to just bring body products or just, you know, you want to kind of um, do a little bit of all of them. So I've got my bath, body, and home products in my little sampler packs. So you're going to bring your samples. Okay, perfect. So Wholesale Supply, Wholesale Supply Plus, yeah, they would, they have them apparently. Okay, so you're going to go with your letter. You're going to go with your little samples. You're going to walk in, and you're going to ask to speak to a manager or an owner, and you're going to talk to them right then and there. I don't like doing this because if they're A, busy or not interested, you're going to get a really crappy, hi, Joanne, I'm glad you're able to attend today. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you'll be able to, um, you're, they're going to be either distracted or not interested, and they might make you feel um, unwelcome kind of thing. So I don't always like to do right, straightforward, bang, I'm here kind of thing. I like to do the second option. I like to um, drop off my letter ask to speak to owner or manager or whatever and just give them my letter and say um, I'm Sophie from so-and-so company and um, I'm bringing you this letter to possibly talk to you about wholesale wholesale um, products with my with my business here's my um, business card I always um, put my letter in an envelope and I staple my envelope or my business card on the outside because if you put it in the inside then I find that's an automatic thing. You give them your business card and they're always going to look at it as you're, as you're talking to them and they're reading your name and they're kind of, you know, so you want it on the outside of the, of the envelope so that you give them the envelope and they can read that as you're talking. Um, all my information is in that letter. So if you're interested, you know, my contact information is in there and some details and stuff, give me a call or email me whenever, you know, you're ready or if you're interested and you leave, that's it. You don't bring samples, you don't sit there and talk to them about anything or whatever. If they say, well, I'd have time right now, say, let's book an appointment so that we have more time to sit down and really talk and I can bring you products and stuff for you to test and to, 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 um, to try out right then and there. And just, you don't even say, well, I didn't bring anything. You don't say that. You say, how about we book an appointment so that we have more time to talk and sit down and really, really go through the products properly to, so I can really show you what my products are. That's it. And then they're either going to say, uh, whatever, or sure, I'll book an appointment right now, or I'll look at your letter, I'll read it, blah, 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 and I'll get back to you. You can, so that's the second option. That's the option that I like. Um, the third option would be to just give them a call. Um... I find that a little bit impersonal because they don't know, they, they can't see you, they don't know who you are, you're just calling. Um, sometimes they don't take it seriously. How many business you visit per day? I really appreciate this information. I'm afraid I will get nobody. That's the thing is that it's hard to um, just go to a business, right? So that's why I like the letter because you're not right up in their face with product right away. You're just bringing them a letter. People do that all the time. Like I said, I worked in a salon. People drop off letters for fundraisers, for whatever it may be, all the time. And it's not a big deal, okay? Um, it's really, really not a big deal. So you're just walking in. Hi, can I speak to a manager or owner? 
you wait. Hi, my name is Sophie, and I just wanted to drop this letter off. I own blah, blah, blah business, um, and I'd like to talk to you about an opportunity whenever you have the time. And that's it. So I know at first it's going to be kind of um, scary, but once you do a few, then you're good. How many do I do in a day? Um, I would, I like I said, I only have three wholesale um, stores that I work with. Um, and two of them I didn't have to go see and the one um, I did but it was kind of it was a little different than this but the idea is still there so in a day and this is something that I'm going to be starting to do um, as soon as the snow can kind of go away because it's really cold out <laughs> um, I would do a full day if you can like I said stack them in in one day then you're done. You don't have to dread it. The first few, you're going to be like, oh, you know, waiting in your car and kind of like, hey, am I going to do this? And work yourself up and do it. Okay. Just do it because the rewards afterwards are going to be way better than just sitting at home saying, oh, I really wish I could get like wholesale orders and stuff. You're not going to get anything until you get out there and do it. Did I mention specifics and letters? I did. And when the video is uploaded after I'm done blabbing, you'll be able to kind of rewatch it. I don't want to talk about it again just because we've already did and I don't want to make this video longer than it has to be, okay? But I did, so just rewatch it later on. Um, so yeah, so over the phone and then you could email them. The two last ones, if you're really nervous and you really can't do it, I mean, it's at least you're doing something, but I would really, really, really shoot for going with the letter, no samples, just walking in, saying who you are and that you're offering wholesale products and you would like to work with them plain and simple okay so those are the four ways that you could approach now how do you get a list prepared or how do you find businesses google or if you're still old school you can go through the phone book google search businesses in I'm in Sudbury, businesses in Sudbury, salons in Sudbury, um, boutiques in Sudbury, spas in Sudbury, restaurants in Sudbury, maybe not restaurants, but local places are the best, okay? So if you've got a little local boutique or a little local um, anything, go to them, okay? Health food store, local health food stores are awesome. Um, anywhere that has a little, like, that sells anything other than food, obviously, go to them corner stores go to them um local i know there's some businesses here they're in local hardware stores okay they'll just go it doesn't matter what it is just go if they sell little things and have like you know go to them local go to them don't go to like um home depot and places like that that you're not going to get anything obviously go to the little local spots okay so search engine go to your google search now what you're going to do is you're going you're looking for a contact name you're looking for an address you're looking for a phone number you're looking for an, a facebook page a website anything like that okay so you're going to write yourself a list either by i like writing by hand i do a lot of writing by hand but even if you want to do like a, a setup on on um word you can do that too but anyways organize yourself to keep it all together okay so you're going to write the business name, you're going to find a contact name, you're going to find an address, and you're going to find a phone number. Um, visit their Facebook page, like their Facebook page if they have it. Um, visit their website. If there's um, if there's a way of seeing the store, like some of them have like the 360 view, look at that. Um, on their Facebook page, look at the past posts and see if they have um, like a list of their, their workers that work there or um, little little um like biography on the owner or anybody like that what percentage that they can price the piece um so that's kind of i'll talk about that after okay because this is a that's a little bit iffy okay um let me just finish this and i'll talk about the percentage so make a list and then that's how you're going to write your letter okay so you're just going to write to their name that's how you're going to figure everything out um Right out, yeah. Okay, so write out your letter. Now you're going to put it in the envelope. You're going to have on top your name, or you can just clip your or staple your business card, okay? On the outside. Don't put your business card inside. Put it on the outside, okay? 
so they can see your business card right away. And if they don't open the envelope, then your business card is going to be out in their face. So if the envelope is just laying around, they're going to see that little business card and be like, oh yeah, that girl came. Whereas if it's inside and it just says a name on it or whatever, it's not as attractive as if it's got the business card on the outside. So take a day or two, map it out to where you're going to go so that it makes sense and you're not traveling all over the city and go go out there even if you bring a friend so that it kind of helps you she drives you walk out and you don't even have to drive and stuff if you're like you know um yeah so bring a friend with you and just do it go out for a day and send them all out then you're gonna do your follow-up cards okay or calls calls or emails if you want so you're gonna make you're gonna already have your list so you're just gonna as you go through um it's good on your list if you leave some space for if you did already talk to them when when you were dropping off the letter if they said oh yeah like um you know call me next week or call me on this date mark that down as soon as you get in the vehicle mark it down if there's anything that you guys talked about already booking already or whatever it may be so that you stay organized okay um and that's all there is to it so hopefully that helps to kind of you know um get into the to the businesses to make it a little bit easier um, now percentage um, I do I do 40 and I do 30 30 was the first business that I did and then I went to 40 now I think I'm gonna stick to 30 but the one business it's already at 40 so I'm just leaving it at that and it's not a big deal um, I just feel like 40 is a little too high. The reason I did 40 with her is because I know her. She's a good friend. And, um, you know, my costs are covered. I'm still making money. Um, and that's why I did that. 30 is a bit better. Um, definitely not 50. So I would stick between 20 and the 30 um, discount, I guess. Now, for what they charge. So I on my, on my wholesale order... Um, I basically just have um, the name of the product, a little description. I have um, their price, and then I have suggested retail price, which is 30 or 40, however percentage that you want. Like I said, try to stick between the 20 and 30%, okay? That's the suggested retail price. One of the companies doesn't follow my, re my retail price because they have no competition right now. The two other businesses aren't in the city, so she does 100%. So if I charge her 10% or $10 for the product, she's charging $20 for the product, okay? Um, so they can really, they can do whatever they want. If they have no competition, they can mark it up 200% if they want. It's, it's, that's not up to you. That's up to them. You're suggesting a retail price, so the only problem is that and you're, they'll have to realize that if they tr if their um, their retail price is higher than your retail price, is that when you go to craft shows or if you're selling to somebody else, their product is going to be higher than everybody else's. So they might not want to go buy the product there. The thing is, is that where I'm selling the product, it's at a foot clinic, and so the products that I make for them. I don't really carry on my own, so they're really, they're the only place. Unless another foot clinic was to call call me up and say, I want product, they have no competition. So she charges whatever she wants because she knows that they can't get it anywhere else, okay? So that's another thing too. So you could suggest whatever you want. They're going to charge whatever they want though. Um, and again, stick with the 20 to 30%. What are your thoughts on someone taking your product and branding it themselves, labeling with their own labels and name, but they are giving me a huge deal? Um, it depends. Now, if it's like a signature product, so I know that there's some spas and stuff, they want a signature scent that it's only their store that's going to have love spell, let's say, okay? Or actually, let's say this one. Passion fruit nectarine from Candora. You guys need to hop on this one. Whoever that's in Canada, it smells delicious. This was my freebie for my order. Okay, so anyways, I just had to talk about that one. No credit to me. No. If you have to have your name on the product, 
You have to. And if they, if they want to add their name to the product, then that's fine. But there's an extra fee for that. Um, and that's something that you're going to have to decide. So if they want a signature or whatever, then that's fine because your name's still going to be on it. And then you could leave a little spot for them to put a little sticker with their logo on it or something. Um, um, you know, uh, how do I want, I don't want to say like signature, but limited to them kind of thing. There's a word and I just can't find it. Um, but anyways, that's fine. But if they don't want your name on it at all, that not you have to have your name on it they can have their name on the front and yours underneath but your name has to be on there there's no way because then they're basically saying that it's their product and that's not true so it has to be there exclusive there you go that's the word that I was looking for so exclusive to their store fine but your name still has to be on there that's not okay even if it's a big deal it you know what, tell them it's fine if you want to put your name on the front, but I have to at least have my name and my address and everything. And that's labeling uh, rules. You, they, you have to, so you have to. And I would just tell them your name could be first, but I have to have my name somewhere on there. So that's basically what you're going to do. And then when you go, you're going to bring your little samples. You're going to bring your wholesale order. You're going to, um, any, any questions that you think that they're going to ask, you're going to bring. Um, make sure that you know your ingredients for all of your products. Make sure that you know what SLSA is. Make sure you know what your preservatives are. Make sure, make sure, make sure you know everything. Because they're, they could easily come up and be like, oh, what's this product what's this word and if you don't know what it is if you don't know that it's part of your dermal plus um preservative because you don't write dermal plus plus right you write what the ingredients are in dermal plus so if you don't know that blah 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 blah, blah is part of dermal plus and what it is they're going to be like you don't even know what's in your product girl and they're not even going to talk to you okay so you need to know what your products are what they do how to use them bring presentation stuff so you could bring a big bowl and say can I borrow some water because I want to show you how my bath bombs work because my bath bombs are the bomb okay they don't just fizz around and do nothing they've got butters on them I've got a butter drizzle or butter dipped in them or whatever and they foam and look at the color that comes out and okay you want to talk up your business you want to be positive about your business your business is better than everybody else's business okay so press do live demos have the other girls come and say could we, could we do it after work hours so that all the girls that work here could all come for like a half an hour so I could do some live presentations for you guys and show you how freaking awesome, not freaking, but how awesome my products are and how exciting it would be to have them in your, in your business, okay? So even if you have to do that. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to talk about your products, this and that. She might ask you questions, answer them as best as you can. If you don't have an answer, say, you know what, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to get back to you on that and do. So write a little note that night, search it. And the next day, email her or call him or call her and tell them. Okay. You want to stay on top of your stuff. You don't want to let it drag because then they're just going to get over it. Okay. Leave, um, all the information that you can with them. So if you have a pamphlet, leave it with them. If you've got your wholesale order or whatever pages, leave it with them, leave the samples, all that kind of stuff. Okay week later you're going to call them if they haven't contacted you after and talk to them about it again um, if they do call you and they're ready to order um, then you're good to go um, from there you decide if you want to put you know minimums on the products what I like to do is the first order they can pretty much just kind of order whatever they want there's no minimums and stuff um, you know, if they only want to order $50 just to try it out, whatever, they can do that. Um, and then after that, in my con, like, so you'd have to write up a contract that goes over everything. Um, and, uh, and just basically, you know, say that your first order, you can order whatever you want. Um, and then after that, you have to have a minimum of and decide. So if your batches make 10, say a minimum of 10. If your batches say whatever, like, decide what your rules are your rules okay but make sure that you follow them and make sure that they follow them don't ever let them get away with anything because as soon as you let them get away with one thing then you're screwed and they can get away with other things and then you're just stuck okay so don't be be nice but don't be lenient on things these are the rules stick to them okay um 
I did that once and I got screwed. Well, not screwed, but I just, I told them that she could keep ordering whatever she wanted to. And so I was getting one of, uh, or two, you know, let's say 20 bath bombs. I want two in this scent. I want three in this scent. I want one in this scent to try it out. I want three in the, and I was like, I can't do this. And then I had to just say you either do, you know, minimums or we can't work together anymore because this is too, it's too much, right? And she didn't want to do that. So I said, peace. Like I don't make more work than it, than it has to be because you're going to stress yourself out. Okay. So that's how I do the, um, how to approach businesses. Okay. Um, I want to talk quickly about, um, marketing. It's not going to be long. There's just different ways that you can market. And, um, I just want to kind of put them out there so that you can start building the, the business. Okay. So obviously the first one is social media. Everybody knows that post a lot, post a lot on Facebook. You should be posting at least once a day, um, once to three times a day, they actually recommend the, and they actually have times that you should be posting on social media, good times and bad times. Okay. So good times on Facebook for social media. Good times on Facebook, one to two o'clock or four to six o'clock. The dead zones are 12 to 8 a.m. Now, the good thing about Facebook is that you can um, schedule publishing time. So if you even, I've done this, when I know that I'm having a busy week and I just don't have time to sit on social media, especially on Facebook and post and stuff, what I do is one of the nights I sit down and I figure out, okay, so I want to post this on Monday. I think I'm going to post this on Tuesday. I want to do a giveaway on Wednesday. So I'm going to post that on Wednesday and okay, figure out your week and figure out the times that you want to post, schedule them, post them all in one day and schedule, schedule them to go out whenever, whatever time that you want them to go out. Okay. Which is a great, great, great tool to use. So use it to maximize your time. Instagram, for me, I say Instagram at any time of the day because you know what? I mean, again, as long as it's not from 12 till 8 a.m., if it's any time of the day, I have people liking all the time, adding all the time. They're not all from your region. So if they're in Australia and you're in Canada, they're up at the opposite times as you, right? So just post whenever you want. Again, once to three times a day. I've had days, if I'm busy, I've posted like five times. By the fifth one, I'm like, People are going to be pissed, but you know what? They still like the stuff and they still comment. And so just post as much as you want. And I like using Instagram for like behind the scenes kind of thing. So I don't always post like, um, my fancy pictures of it, like set up on a background and then, you know, all edited and stuff. No, I'm posting like little boomerang videos of like my mixer going and adding like a color in it, or I'm posting videos of me like piping something or pouring something or you want to be interactive with, with Instagram. I find Facebook too, but I find Facebook is a little bit more like the finished product kind of thing. Like, Oh, look what's new. I just, you know, these are going to be available on so-and-so date or whatever. Instagram. I, I use more for behind the scenes. Now also with Instagram, you want to, um, well, this is what I did anyways. And I found that it really helped me stay like professional. You want a, personal Facebook or personal Instagram um, account and a business Instagram account and you want to keep them separate. I like on birthdays, so if it's my birthday or my kids' birthdays or around Christmas time, uh, things like that, I'll post like a picture, like a family picture or something and just be like, oh, this is what we're doing today, blah, 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 blah. But I don't go and post a bunch of things, personal things on my business account. I've separated that just because you you want to keep it separate, okay? So that's my tip for Instagram. I don't use Twitter, but they um, are saying that from one to three are high peaks to, or good times to be posting um, on Twitter. And from 8, a, uh, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. are the dead zones to post. Now, these were just um, things that I took off of the internet. If you find that it's different, that's fine, but these are just recommendations. So social media, you could be posting on there. Ask for referrals. So if you go, if you know a business owner, uh, somebody who owns a restaurant or someone who owns a dentist's office or whatever, and you're talking to them, they know people, okay? If you own a business, you know people, a big business. Um, so talk to them and say like, do you know anybody who owns like a little boutique or do you know 
anybody like a um, an owner of a salon that would maybe be interested in in having my products or you know and just ask them and if they say yeah maybe or even just say I'm gonna give you my card because maybe at some point you're gonna think about somebody that you know that would be really interested in having my products in their store give them your card leave cards everywhere leave cards I had I was reading and I should have printed it out everywhere uh, gas stations which is kind of gross but whatever gas stations um, uh, libraries, um, grocery stores, um, like regular businesses, so doctors and stuff like that, restaurants, they sometimes have like the little pin board and you can pin um, at fabric stores. I know like at Fabricland, I go to Fabricland a lot, um, they have like a big board there to pin your stuff, pin it there. Pin it, your, and if you want to kind of make it a little bit more to your advantage, don't post just, don't pin just your business card. Make a little like one sh like one piece pamphlet kind of thing with a little bit of information and then people can read it and on the bottom say if you're interested take a picture of me and you can contact me that way right so they don't have to take your card or anything or like the little piece of paper on the bottom that says your number kind of thing they don't have to do that they can just take a picture and then they can contact you so there's tons of places that you can leave your business cards and ask for referrals okay Attend um, networking events. So where I am, we have um, women's shows kind of thing where women can go and they can put tables out with their stuff, but they also can sit and listen to speakers that are there to talk about networking and business, um, you know, uh, benefits with the business and stuff. So attend those. Sometimes, like I know ours, um, I think there's a dinner with them too. I haven't been to one yet and I wanted to go with one of my other girlfriends that's kind of businessy and all that and we never got around to doing it, but it's something that I wouldn't mind doing. So that's, that's another thing that you can do too. Um, promote discounts on your Facebook page and special offers. So if you have um, a new sampler pack or whatever, do a specific post just for that and promote it, okay? Um, or special offers or anything like that. Um, write a guest post on a blog or a business page for a friend. So I know um, Nadia from the Nadia Effect, she's doing a guest um, recipe blogging kind of thing. Talk to her. If you've got a really cool recipe that you want to share or something, talk to her and be a guest blogger or post for her or for anybody. Like, just look into it. You can look online and and find people that want to take guest bloggers and stuff on. If you're not a blogger, I don't know, try, um, just try. And it's not that hard. So you're just writing your recipe or something and sharing, you know, how you do it. And that's, that's all there is to it, right? It's, you don't have to write a big, you know, story or anything. It's really, really quick and easy. Um, so that's another idea. You can partner up with other business friends. So I have um, a business uh, colleague. I went to high school with her and um, she started um, a baby clothing line and um, I've partnered up with her often um, to do certain things. So, and not just with my soaping uh, business. I, I'm kind of a crafty freak, so I do a lot of different things. So I've done bath bombs. She just had a mom to mom market not that long ago and I made bath bombs for her. So I sold those to her at wholesale and she had them there. And she said she, I gave her, I made her 25 of them and she said she had three left. So that's marketing my business and helping her out too, right? So you can do stuff like that too. If you know any like friends that are selling different things and stuff, um, you can help them out with that, with that too. So, um, that's another idea. Do giveaways. Don't do them too often, but when you hit like, let's say on Facebook, when you hit, let's say whatever, like 500 uh, likes or thousand or whatever, do a giveaway. Um, if you, even if you accomplish something personally and you just want to thank everybody. So let's say, um, whatever your goal this month was to sell a thousand dollars and you hit that, do a giveaway. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, you made a new product or something and you want to get the, you know, you want to get people to, to, to hear about it and stuff. Do a give, giveaway on that new product. Simple, easy. It doesn't have to be every month or every week or anything. Boom. More followers that way. Um, host your own event or craft show or social event. I know tons of businesses, local businesses in my area that do this. So they, um, talk to, um, a social, oh, he's crying. I'm just going to go and get him. Okay, guys, one second.
a du monde là. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You may or may not stay. I don't know, but I want to try and get a little bit more done. Okay. My mom's emailing me. And, okay. So, um, yeah, so host your own little events, okay? So you can go to um, local little um, bars or whatever. Um, we have like a place that's called La Fromagerie and it's a little, um, it's not a bar, it's like a little place where you could order food and stuff. They have cheese and, and um, like fancy meats and stuff. And it's just like a social area, social gathering where people get together. Um, they have like live bands, local bands and stuff like that, okay? So go talk to them and say, I want to um, host um, a launch party or I want to host a little event or something. And talk to talk to those kinds of businesses and host a little night gathering. So you would have product there and people can come and talk to you and, you know, get to know you. You could have a couple of other little businesses um, obviously not Bath and Body or whatever, but other types of little businesses, your business colleagues and stuff, you guys get together and you host a little gathering. So you could do stuff like that. You could do your own craft shows. You could talk, you can go and book a, a hall or whatever, an arena or anything like that, a space and do your own craft show and, and market it as you doing it. Um, so that can get you out too. Um, reach out to local media, go to your newspaper and say, I'd like to put a little, you know, blurb about my business and stuff. You could, you, I know some of the stuff you have to pay for, but who cares? Even if it's 50 bucks or hundred bucks, your name is on the newspaper or whatever for everybody to see, right? <sighs> so it's a marketing cost. So you can do that. Um, comment, comment on people, Ooh. comment on people who are commenting on your things. Say thank you. Say, you know, um, even on, on other people's products and stuff comment you're sharing the love and people are going to see that you're um you're nice basically okay um start a blog you could start your own blog and start talking about your own products and stuff like that that's a little bit harder i don't think i would do that just because I, I don't have the time but if you have a little bit more time that would be a great thing to start um start a youtube channel i started doing that and i got great response and started doing these live demos and stuff and, and little chit chats and everybody's loving them and I like to do them. They're very rewarding. I like to see that people are enjoying it and stuff and it makes me happy. It makes me um, more confident in, you know, where I'm going as a business and stuff and that, yeah, the things that I feel are important in my business and that I'm sharing with you guys, you guys feel the same way. Therefore, I feel like, yeah, I'm doing this right. Okay. So those are things that you guys can do. I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about today. Um, if there's any comments, what's your company name? I just changed my name. Um, and it's now the Urban Sopery. Sopery spelled uh, in French because <laughs> we're French. So, um, yeah, so if there's any other questions, you can definitely comment below or message me. If I can find that letter, I will post it in these comments here. And like I said, as soon as I can get my face or my YouTube channel going with the monetization and all that, then I'm going to start posting the videos on there for you guys to watch um, and save and, you know, subscribe and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, I hope this helped. Any questions, comment below and we will talk soon. Thanks, guys.